Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of talk you guys through my initial starting atlas for PoE 3.22. Um, now, do note that this is designed for Softcore Trade League. Uh, I do believe I would have some adjustments if I was playing SSF, but a lot of it is still applicable. Um, more so, I'm going to explain my reasoning for taking etc. And do remember that there are many, many, many different ways to progress your Atlas. So let me go ahead and walk you guys through what I'm doing. Now, before I get started, I do want to state that if your primary goal is rushing tier 16 maps as fast as possible, you typically want to take Wandering Path and then go ahead and stack your adjacent map nodes. So that way, when you clear a T2, it drops a tier 3, you clear a tier 3, it drops a tier 4, and etc. Uh, I will not be doing that. I'm not really in any rush necessarily. Um, it is nice to get your two big void stones off of your Eater and your Exarch, but again, I'm not in much of a rush. The game's not going anywhere for me. So let's get started. First off, um, the nodes on the tree have changed a little bit with this patch, so I will go ahead and walk you guys through it. So I'm going to be starting off getting Focused Investigation, which makes it so that we can start building up Jun missions. These are going to be very important for unlocking our crafts with my Righteous Fire build, and in general, pretty much any build you play. So some of these crafts that you can unlock, I just have this little cheat sheet from or my, my uh, old goals list, but you can get physical as fire, sorry, physical damage taken as fire and lightning on your body armor. This is one of your strongest crafts against physical damage. Um, plus one gems on your, uh, you can craft on like helmet and boots. This is also kind of like a pseudo five link because if it drops unveiled, it's plus two. So you could run a white map, pick up a helmet, unveil it from, you know, the mechanic, and then you get a plus two helm, and that's pretty good, right? You can get 3% flash regen, although this is Katarina only. A uh, hybrid chaos res, so anytime you see people with a crafted mod of like 15% fire and chaos res, that comes from here. Fire multi, fire damage and ignite chance, minimum frenzy, there's minimum endurance, increased damage on rings, damage during flask effect, uh, physical damage taken as fire on a helmet, a lot of really cool stuff in here. So this is a very big part of it for me. I will not be taking the expedition right away. Um, this is more so for like the yellow and red maps. So moving up forward, right? Gonna swing across and go into my bribery and my effective leadership. Expedition, sorry, not expedition. Uh, betrayal is also a very good source of XP in the early game, even like mid game. Uh, it just, anytime you click one of the options for like interrogate or bribe, you'll just get a chunk of experience. Now, even if you don't know what you're doing with betrayal, it does not matter. Uh, as long as you are trying to bribe whenever that option pops up. The only time I think I don't bribe is remove all rivalries, but if you don't know what you're doing, it probably doesn't even matter. Uh, just know that bribing drops a lot of loot, and you want to unveil that gear to unlock your crafts. Once we have acquired most of the crafts, I will literally remove it, right? Anyway, though, moving on forward. I'm going to go ahead and jump right on into shaping the mountains. This will help with some map sustain. It's very important to get map sustain Otherwise, you're kind of going to feel like you're running maps and not going anywhere. You're kind of staying around the same tier, right? So th these are very, very, very nice. From here, I will decide if map sustain is good enough, which there's no way it will be with just one. Um, I'll take shrines. I'll probably save the shrines a little bit uh, for later. Shrines are for pure enjoyment, nothing else. They do add some density, and you can get really lucky with getting like an acceleration shrine at the beginning and zooming through the whole map. I love shrines. They're my favorite. You know, there's nothing better than jumping into the middle of a shrine and pressing Infernal Cry and watching the whole screen explode. It's fantastic. Anyway, though, moving on, uh, I'll be going over to Cryptic Gateway here to most likely swing over to the other side so that we can grab our extra set of map sustain nodes. Um, if I don't need it, I will not take this, right? Pretty nice about the gateway. We can just remove it. Um, furthermore, you've got the option of Stream of Consciousness, so I will plug this in for two points since this also scales like your strong boxes. Uh, your shrines. I'm pretty sure shrines are on here. Yeah, shrines are on there. All right, so moving forward, um, I will probably take the two points here in extreme archaeology right away because I want to do expedition, but since I will be playing in a party, you know, with some of my friends, uh, it really just takes too much time and breaks the immersion of party play when I'm like, hold up, guys, let me just do my expedition. Everyone go use the restroom, right? Extreme archaeology is just find the good spot in the expedition that doesn't have immune to fire, drop it down, kaboom, kill it, move on. Also, something interesting, if you are struggling, you can actually manipulate the shrines to benefit you during the expedition. So say there's like a resistance shrine or a massive shrine or divine shrine. 
Um, you could synergize by blowing up the expedition, taking the shrine, and then clearing the whole shrine or the uh, expedition. So kind of cool. You know, it, it seems a lot more complicated than it really is. It's not going to be that difficult. Also, these shrines, when they're buffed up, last like 90 seconds. It, I'm sure it doesn't take more than 10 seconds to place this archaeology bomb and boom it, right? Or expedition. So moving on forward, going to be going upwards here and going to be swinging into Kirak. Big fan of Kirak. It helps a lot with map sustain. Or not necessarily map sustain, but it helps uh, filling out the Atlas, and I hate trading, even though I play Trade League on League Starts. So this helps me out with just getting my scouting reports and actually building up the Kirak missions. Then from here, I'm going to swing in and just grab extra map sustain nodes. This literally doesn't do anything for me, but I can't get these three without taking this. So yeah, anyway. I don't plan on using my currency at the beginning on crafting options. I just want to complete the Atlas, right? From here, I'll be moving up and swinging across, most likely taking the rest of the uh, shrine nodes, depending on our progression, right? Moving up more and grabbing the shaping nodes, and then I will most likely go hard into the expedition nodes. So buried knowledge being one of the most important because uh, logbooks are very, very... Logbooks are basically like candy um, in early PoE League. There are people who just literally run logbooks all day because they profit, I don't want to run the logbooks. I'm just going to sell them, right? I want to just map. So this is a big form of currency. And then after I have taken this, I'll come back down and make sure that I grab my uh, hunt for answers right over here to scale the expedition chance. So to pretty much summarize, shrines are really fun. I like to spec into them. We have pretty much all the map sustain nodes on the tree. So both of the shaping nodes along with the ones up here. Expedition will be our main source of currency. We make most of that currency by selling logbooks. It's really easy. When a logbook drops, you open up your Awakened POE trade. You, little, you press your little button. Uh, it tells you how much it's worth. If it has multiple options, like um, sometimes, you know, each person has their own. I don't even know what to call it for uh, for Expedition, but there, there's, there's like up to four options. You just click each option and see which one is worth the most, and then you sell it. If it has a boss, it's worth more. You can't miss it because it'll be more expensive when you're selling it. Uh, and then we have Betrayal to unlock our unveils. Um, and that's pretty much about it. And then once we're done with Betrayal, we will remove it. And then from there, I will most likely branch upward over here, right? Grab my shrine nodes, swing across over here, um, probably grab my altars, swing down again, grab my eater nodes because I love eater. Um, and then I will most likely grab Intelligence Gathering, even though I don't have much Betrayal anymore. The reason I take this is because I map quickly, so I will build up Safe House Intelligence. Then I can run those Safe Houses, and there's a good chance, not a good chance of stuff dropping, but you can get very rare drops like Paradoxica. It's still very good experience, and this builds up Katarina, uh, which can have even more good stuff, right? But, you know, everything is subject to change based off of what I do. Also, when you are over here, you can also kind of pinpoint your expedition to be more towards um, Tuyan. Tuyan is the guy where you can straight pull currency out of. You basically trade the expedition currency for any currency you want, literally, right? So that is something pretty cool. And then from here, we will decide what we want to do and kind of just move on, right? But this is just the initial, probably first day, day two, um, day one and day two, and we'll see pretty much where this takes us. Uh, I'm a big fan of doing Grand Design, so Grand Design is definitely going to be something on the list. I do also want to do a little bit more crafting this go around in Trade League. Um, crafting is going to mean that I'm going to want Harvest, so we'll worry about that later. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. However, this Sunday for the Path of Exile League, or next Sunday, um, I'll be streaming as well, so you can definitely find me there. Anyway, I'll have the PoE Planner linked down below. Um, one of the last things to talk about, there is this interesting node right over here called All Hands. So we were talking about this on stream a lot today. It basically makes it so nodes like this, you have a 4% chance to uh, take this, not this, but uh, to build up a master mission. This would make it so instead of building up the master mission, it just is in the map, right? So you, you do it right there and interact with it. The only problem I have with this is I do believe it prevents you from building Kirak missions, and I do like having Kirak missions. So I'm really torn on whether or not I take all hands 
Thankfully, it's, you know, really easy. We would just literally do this. And if we don't like it, we just do that. But this is something else just to kind of really squeeze those unveils to get them out as soon as possible. But anyway, that's about it. So take care. Have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.